So the respiratory system is, encompasses several organs, not just the lung. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the pathways uh, that air got to the lung, um, starting with the nasal cavity, and then the uh, pharynx, and then the larynx, and the trachea, and then we're finally down to the bronchi and into the parenchyma of the lung. Now, there are two... Um, Oh, I did want to point out that we're not going to talk about the mouth. Now, you, you can certainly um, take air in through your mouth, but we're going to cover that with the digestive system. Okay, so the respiratory system has two parts to it, if you just sort of divide it um, anatomically. And one part is called the conducting portion, and that's going to be the part of the system that brings air to the... Uh, not only to the lung, but even to the smaller and smaller air passages where you're not going to have any gas exchange occurring in these structures. And then there's an anatomic shift um, over into uh, the location where you have alveoli where res uh, gas exchange is going to occur. And so we call uh, that part the respiratory portion. But most of the uh, respiratory um, system, different different uh, anatomic structures we're going to talk about are going to be differentiating the conducting portion, but for if you looked at surface area, the alveolar um, surface area is much larger. Okay, so most of the of the respiratory system is going to have an epithelial layer that has five different cell types in it, and we call it respiratory epithelium. Okay, the most common cell or most pre uh, prominent cell in this epithelial layer is a ciliated columnar cell. And so that cell has a lot of cilia, we'll talk about in a second. And um, just collectively, it is pseudostratified. It looks pseudostratified in most places. So that means pseudostratified, that it's really one layer, but they all look like it's, it's more than one. But all of the cells touch the basement membrane, and that's why they call it pseudostratified. And so in this picture here, you can he you can uh, hear, <laughs> you can see the respiratory epithelium. You can hear a dog barking, maybe, but um, there's the respiratory epithelium. And uh, there are lots of nuclei in this epithelial sheet, and there's cilia uh, here at the apical portion of the cells. Now, underneath the epithelium sheet is where the basement membrane is, and it's pretty prominent in the respiratory system. And underneath the basement membrane, there is an area of connective tissue that we refer to as the lamina propria. And this uh, region has some special structures uh, throughout the respiratory um, system in it. And um, for example, glands and cartilage would be two things that would be in that area. And so that term is kind of thrown around a lot in um, this chapter and they don't really explain it too well, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so the ciliated columnar cell is the most abundant. It's got lots and lots of cilia on each surface and the cilia is going to uh, rhythmically beat. Um, so they're motile cilia and they uh, are going to bring mucus and other uh, particles that get trapped in the mucus up out of the respiratory tract so that it can be swallowed by the pharynx. Here is another picture of that uh, displayed here. So you can see the pseudostratified um, columnar epithelium, um, really nice line of cilia here, okay, and um, you can also see the basement membrane. This is a trichrome stain, so it's stained blue. All right, the next cell uh, is pretty abundant, actually, in a lot of parts of the respiratory system is the goblet cell, and we talked about goblet cells uh, early in the class. They are unicellular glands, so they are going to uh, produce mucin. Mucin will mix with water and become mucus, and uh, you usually see the mucin inside the cell um, towards the lumen of the epithelial sheet. And it's filling up the cell and the nucleus gets pushed to, uh, downward and kind of shoved out of the way. Actually, this is the nucleus, sorry. Pushed downward and shoved out of the way. So in the arrows, you can see all the, the goblet cells. Uh, there are no cilia at the end of a goblet cell, okay? Um, but they can be very abundant in some areas, like I'm about to show you, um, and uh, sometimes you could see it just looks like it's pale staining, so it's not staining really deep. You're not necessarily going to see granules inside, so that's why it has such a light appearance. So in this uh, larger image, I wanted to give you something uh, clearer and a little bit more zoomed in, and you can see multiple goblet cells here um, all throughout this epithelial sheet. So uh, they're pretty prominent. All right, uh, brush cells is another cell type. They're not mentioned in the Weeders book for lab, but they are talked about in Junk Harris. 
Um, they are columnar, but they do not have cilia on them. They have microvilli. And there's only about three, only about 3% of the cells in the epithelium are brush cells. So there, there's not a very big cellular population. But um, they don't have cilia, so they're not doing an, anything with moving. moving. But <clears throat> they do have chemosensory receptors on the end of these cells. So it's kind of like um, the gustatory sense of of uh, taste and <clears throat> these cells have um, adjacent nerve endings afferent so sensory nerve endings that are adjacent to the basal surface of the cell and um, you don't have to identify these but you can see in this picture here this is an EM uh, from your textbook I'm gonna zoom in on it in a in a the next um, slide so that you can see some of the uh, features you can see the ciliated cells and you can see um, cells that have mucin at the apical part that's sort of bulging out here. And then you can see these cells over here have microvilli on them, blunt microvilli instead of cilia, and those are going to be the brush cells. And then there's another population called small granule cells. You don't have to identify these either. They do uh, represent about an, um, the, another 3% of the total cell population. And they are part of, the, of a diffuse neuroendocrine system that exists in the respiratory system, also exists in the digestive system, okay? And so you're not really gonna see them uh, or have to look for them. Um, I, I had to actually search pretty far to find an EM of them, of, of these types of cells. And just in case you're really um, super interested in small granule cells and want to learn more, I put a link into uh, this article here just in case you wanna kind of get a gist for what, they're, what they are, are all about. Okay, now then there are basal cells. Basal cells are small um, spherical shaped cells that lie adjacent to the basement membrane and they are going to be the stem cells for all of the cell types in the epithelial sheet. And this is a very common pattern that we're gonna see throughout several systems that have st uh, stratified or pseudostratified epithelium or epithelium that, um, that changes uh, like a transitional. Um, and so these basal cells are sort of um, kind of, I guess, more like a, a universal type of cell that will be in lots of epithelial sheets instead of just targeted to the respiratory system. In this um, picture here, I pointed out several basal cells uh, so that you can see where they're located at. The nuclei are going to be, um, are going to be the most uh, basally located.